Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this presentation we're going to look at the simulator called iTeach FMAX. You know, a better name for this simulator might have been iTeach Analyzer Settings because it helps to explain the changes that you'll see in your measured results depending on how you've set your FMAX, your lines of resolution, your number of averages and the overlap percentage. All kind of dry topics but unfortunately they're things that you need to get right. So first thing we're going to do is say let's generate a vibration of interest. So we're going to say in this instance that the machine is turning at 1500 RPM. So we can set that to whatever we like. And we are going to decide that based on the number of gears or pump vein blades or rolling element bearing the types and, and all that sort of business we have to decide what the F max should be so we're going to just say for the sake of this example that it's uh, it's 1000 Hertz now if we say 1000 Hertz we will get 40 orders or 40 multiples of turning speed so here's my simulated spectrum down here there's my 1x peak and 2x 3x and all the way through so we actually have 40, um, 40 our spectrum is 40x if you like it has a certain frequency of course of a thousand Hertz but that represents 40 times the running speed okay so that's that's our starting point but when you set your analyzer up with a 1000 Hertz F max and 800 lines the analyzer needs a certain amount of time to acquire one block of data to create the FFT and that one block would in this instance be 0.8 seconds long and given the speed of the machine that means that the shaft in that block rotates 20 times now when we're interested in spectrum analysis we're thinking we must have the F max right so that we catch all the frequencies and the harmonics and so on of interest and we need to have our resolution right so that we can separate the sidebands and the different peaks in the spectrum. But when we think about time waveform analysis, we have to think about it in different terms. We have to think about it in terms of shaft revolutions. When I ask for a time waveform, how many shaft revolutions am I going to see? If I had a bearing fault and you know the the a bearing frequency was 6.9x, that means for every rotation of the shaft, I'm going to see six or well, you know, close to seven impacts, and I'm going to see another seven and another seven. So, when you think in terms of time waveform, you have to think what is going to happen in that time waveform that I am able to analyze, and do I have the resolution to see it properly? All these things are very important to consider in order to make sure you get your measurements right. The other important thing, going back to your spectrum, is that we're trying to get repeatability. We want the machine to go through enough rotations and for enough time to pass so that all the noise and the process noise and the, the gears turning and the bearings rolling and all those things all have enough time to occur such that if we were to repeat the measurement, we would uh, get the same measurement. If you cut back too much on your measurement specs, then yep, you'll save some time at the machine, but your measurements will not be repeatable. That means that if you were to test the machine again, the spectrum could look quite different. Anyway, to focus on this simulator, what I can do is say, here is um, 20 shaft rotations based on an F max and, sorry, the F max, that running speed and this resolution. Now, what I can do is just show this in a bit more detail. Now, here I have said I want 10 averages. So, this is one block of time which is based on our 800 lines and this signal. The FFT is based on this calculation. But because I ask for 10 averages, the analyzer will collect enough time waveforms to do those 10 averages. But it depends on the overlap percentage you use. Each one of these white blocks represents a period of time, 0.8 seconds. It is 0.8 seconds, but it overlaps 50% and overlaps 50% and so on. So if I was to take this measurement 
During this test, it will take 4.4 seconds to acquire the data, and that represents uh, over 100 shaft rotations. So you can think, is that enough time for the machine to have, you know, gone through what it's going to go through so I've got a nice repeatable measurement. If I were to reduce those number of averages and if I was to increase the overlap percentage perhaps then we have something different here. We've got the first block, a little bit of overlap with the second block and third block and so on and we the whole measurement is only 26 shaft rotations. It takes one second. Now you might feel well hey one second is better than four seconds of course you know if we change this f max down something lower then these times become larger but you know 26 shaft rotations that's not enough time you know the machine hasn't done enough to make sure you've got a repeatable measurement anyway so we can do other things with the simulator we can say let's say we had a, a source of vibration that was 10 times the running speed so we we show that either superimposed or or separately um, and we can then start to say, well, you know, do we do we have the required resolution from a frequency point of view? You know, with this setup, there's my peak at uh, 10x, 20x, 30x, and 40x would be right there. So we only see those really three harmonics. You might say one, two, three, and the fourth one would be just off. So you might start to say, well, we need a, a higher f max in that case. Um, but we can get into the detail of, of looking at the actual uh, samples themselves. So here's the vibration analyzer digitizing the signal. And we can see, well, you know, do we have enough samples on this signal to really represent what's going on? And in this case, we do. Our, our Fmax is, is high enough. If we were to reduce the Fmax, we may not have uh, the required sample rate. So one thing for sure, this simulator lets us explore all kinds of ideas with uh, the effect of the Fmax on different signals, time waveform analysis, spectrum analysis, all kinds of things we can do with this, this particular simulator. I hope you enjoyed that presentation. I hope maybe you uh, learned something about the way the analyzer works and, and all the effects. But uh, thanks for taking the time to view the presentation.